In part 4 of my NAR DL series, I'm going to show how to use wall tests for long run and short run asymmetries. And uh, for this, we're going to go back to the bounce test and work with um, results of the uh, nonlinear error correction uh, work we did. So let's do that real quick. Come here. So that's the bound test results. So remember um, everything we did before, right? That's your F and all that good stuff. And now going back up here. So what we're going to do is right here in the uh, asymmetric uh, error correction output. So highlight from the constants, get all of these. All right, copy, right click, copy. And then we're going to go to quick estimate equation and go here to method select least squares oh sorry stepwise uh, least squares right there and then at the top you're gonna paste your work but only the coefficients of the uh, long run terms these are the long run terms right here right so I'm gonna paste and then come out here make sure to identify your dependent variable which is dlor like so and then just arrange your data accordingly all right keep doing that and then um, and then for the uh, short run coefficients place them right here so I've already prepared my work so as not to waste your viewing time so I'm just going to delete these real quick and go to my cheat sheet <laughs> this is my cheat sheet right here these are the long run terms with a dependent variable proceeding and I paste there I go back here these are my short run terms copy alright and then paste right there voila alright microwave style alright then go here to options under selection method choose unidirectional and I'm gonna use forwards you can use forwards or backwards if you like if you choose forwards then uh, what the method would do is to use uh, the uh, uh, is to uh, use either the lowest p-value criterion or the largest t-statistic criterion for adding variables into the model. Why are we doing this? The goal is to obtain the most parsimonious model. So using the p-value criterion, which is what I'm going to do right now, is going to begin by selecting the variable with the lowest p-value. And so far as that p-value is below 0.05, so I'm going to make sure I type 0.05 right there. You can choose 0.01, you can do 0.10, whatever tickles your fancy right there. Alright, and uh, so the, pro uh, the process moves forward, selecting the next variable with the next lowest p-value until it gets to the one where the p-value is greater than 0.05, then it quits. Alright, if you choose the the backwards approach, it's going to go the other way around, alright? Uh, what, what, what that's going to do is to uh, uh, begin by considering all the variables and then walks its way backwards all right hence the term backwards eliminating the variable with the highest p-value if that p-value is above 0.05 if that's the correct if that's um, the uh, level that you've chosen all right and uh, I I thank my friend uh, Mohammed Mio of uh, Mio School of Research, Lahore, Pakistan, for providing me with this clarification. All right, so we're done, I guess. All right, can look at this one more time and then click OK. There you go. So this is our parsimonious um, asymmetric error correction um, output. So with this, we're ready to rock and roll and do our wall test. To do our wall test, it's a coefficient test, right? So this is the first coefficient, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. Um, etc. Right. So, uh, I, I, but if you are confused as to the coefficient numbers, click View, and um, go to Representations, and you see them right here. Right. You see them right here. You see C1 for the constant, C2 for coefficient for the lag value of uh, the dependent variable, then three, four, five, etc. So anyhow, so here's what we uh, let's go ahead and and do a long run asymmetry test right go to coefficient diagnostics and this time go to wall test all right and don't forget the asymmetric coefficients are the negative of this coefficient right here all right so it's going to be c3 divided by c2 all right equal to negative c4 all right divided by c2 
all right they have a common denominator which is the coefficient of the like value of the dependent variable all right right there all right, I'm gonna copy it because I'll use it one more time so click OK and yeah we do have evidence of long run asymmetry with respect to GDP so there is a uh, uh, a nonlinear relationship between occupancy rates for hotels in America and uh, GDP growth rates. So, to how about ADR, all right, average daily rate? So, view coefficient diagnostics wall test, and I'm going to paste that and simply change the numerator, and uh, that's going to be um, five and six, right? So, five and six. All right, where five is a coefficient for the positive value of um, uh, positive shocks to ADR, and six is the coefficient for negative shocks to ADR. So, okay, no evidence of long run asymmetry. So, in the same way, you're going to do that for the short run asymmetries. But for that, I need to take you back to my PowerPoint right here and move forward to again remind you of what we have just done. This is the uh, uh, asymmetric error correction model and this is the uh, parsimonious output we just got from uh, stepwise regression and uh, these are the coefficients the way I neatly summarize them for myself for ease of use and um, this is uh, the long run asymmetric test that we just conducted right here and uh, going forward these are the results we obtained for GDP and for ADR and going forward some researchers knowing that the denominators in the asymmetric test um, is, the, is common so would just directly test the coefficients of the um, long run terms from the error correction model which is what I, I've done here now the statistics are not going to be identical but the conclusions that you draw for the most part are going to be the same so as you can see here um, we're going to be rejecting the null hypothesis and conclude on asymmetry with respect to GDP, not so with respect to ADR. When it comes to short run tests, I'm going to use the, uh, the additive sum used in uh, the Shane paper as well as in these other studies I referenced right here. So what that means is that I'm going to take the uh, sums of the short run coefficients and uh, uh, for positive and negative and then test them and this is how that comes out so for GDP the sum of the positive is this and this is a negative for ADR the sum of the uh, positive is this and this is the sum of the negatives and that's how I fed them into wall test as you can see here for GDP and as you can see here for ADR evidence none uh, no short run asymmetry with respect to GDP but we do have evidence of short run asymmetry with respect to ADR and you can pause the video and review what I've uh, how I've summarized it right here and enjoy <laughs>